Well, people by the millions across North America are in full preparation mode for the eclipse next Monday. This is animation that the Canadian Space Agency has produced, and it shows you what the path of totality will look like and where it will fall. We will be, as you know, in Niagara Falls, taking in all the action on Monday, talking to the, well, some, we can't talk to all of them, because <laughs> they're expecting about a million people in Niagara, but we're going to talk to all sorts of eclipse chasers why they're there, why they're so caught up in this event. We know that this is going to be one of the most photographed events of the year. There are more than 42 million people in the path of totality alone across North America and tens of millions of people beyond that on the fringes. If you are one and you want to take a picture, you don't want to miss the money shot. So how to take a great eclipse photo safely. Trevor Jones is in with me. He's an astrophotographer, the very first I've ever met an astrophotographer photographer based in the Niagara region uh, and he's been teaching others how to take a good pick for Monday and he's going to do the same with me this morning so welcome glad to meet you thanks Heather is this is this a big deal for you as a photographer to oh, the total solar eclipse absolutely it's the the greatest spectacle in nature they call a total solar eclipse so you're set you're practiced you've got your gear oh, you are you are ready to Hoping go for clear skies is I, the big thing because you, even though you're from Niagara you're not actually staying yeah, in Niagara. We're, we're still in the path we're, we're going to eastern Canada to see it we just had an event out there but yeah the path of totality that's the key that you've got to get there yeah hence uh, why all the people are converging in places like Niagara yeah. uh, I want to help people get a great photo because I've seen some beauties over the years but I want to start with safety because yeah. I think a lot of people think that they can just you know take a camera willy nilly look for their camera there's protection but this can be a very dangerous time trying to get a photo can it absolutely Not. yeah you don't want to mess around with the sun if you're you, you can't look at the partial solar eclipse without solar eclipse glasses to safely view it. Certified solar eclipse glasses, you right. will protect your eyes. And the same goes for your phone. If you're taking a picture just on your phone, you'll need some sort of filtration on your phone camera as well. Because looking through a lens does not protect the eye no, enough. No. Okay, so number one, to do this safely, you have to start with a filter. Show us what you need to do this, first of all, on a, on a cell phone. So yeah, a lot of people have the certified solar eclipse glasses, very right. popular item. And you can actually use these with your phone to take a picture. You can just cover the lens on your phone and use the eclipse glasses to photograph it like this. You can actually get a, a decent picture this way. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. So or you could tape it if you wanted to have a little more hands-free just to make sure it, it doesn't slip. Or... Uh -huh, to, to keep it on there. So during the partial phases, it's, it's an evolving event. So you have right. about an hour to see that moon start to gradually cover the sun and it starts to take a bite out of it and so you have plenty of time to kind of experiment and get a clear shot that way okay if you can get those solar glasses because they're in it's, short time supply. is running out yeah it really is <laughs> if you have a bigger camera what kind of filter do you need so my favorite option it's nice and affordable is this is just called a universal solar filter and you just fold it into a little box like thing like this right and then it just fits over top of the camera lens uses an elastic band Okay. And then it's on there. So this one is for lenses that are 75 to 100 millimeters in diameter. So you can order those as well. And exactly. And all of those things are, are available online or in orange shops, I'm sure. Yep. Okay, so that is the starting point. Make sure you have a solar filter. Dave had a question. We had some great viewer questions. Right. Dave Nichols was wondering, is a polarizing or ND filter enough protection? It's not. It's a, reg not. a regular photography filter, even a really strong one like that, like a strong ND filter, is Ooh. not recommended. You want a certified solar filter or nothing. Okay. Yeah. And for anyone who thinks we're not, you know, we're <laughs> making this too much of this, we're just going to roll a little bit of video because back in 2017, another photographer made quite a splash online when he set his camera up to photograph a uh, solar eclipse with no filter and nothing and as we just keep talking I mean this is what happens it concentrates all the rays that's right, right yeah it intensifies the light and yeah it could damage your it really hurt your eyes and your camera as you can see it smokes it just melts <laughs> the whole thing down so don't do that make sure no. you have the solar filter uh, we had a great question from Courtney Courtney in fact has got the framing for my entire interview <laughs> she is going to do what many people are going to do and I think is try to capture it with a cell phone she wants to know, can you get a decent photograph from a cell phone number one? You can. So the, the big thing to think about is that if you're using your regular camera on your phone, it's going to appear, the sun appears very, quite small, smaller than you might think it is. So if you have a two times or five times digital zoom in your camera, that'll make the, the sun appear a little bit bigger. The challenge there is keeping, a, keeping it steady. 
uh, as you get into that increasing that magnification. So if you have a way to steady it, if you have a tripod or just some way to steady the phone, that will really help. Okay, that's what she was wondering too. Some tips on settings how much of a zoom, steadiness, all of that? Yeah, so the auto mode that your, your, your camera phone takes, it might do an okay job at focusing on the sun and getting a crisp shot that way. What often happens is that it's overexposed or it's too bright using the auto settings. Then you can tap into the more manual or pro camera settings that your phone have. A lot of them have them these days. And you could just dial back the exposure, take a faster picture that will dial down the brightness and hopefully you get a clear shot that way. Okay, and I want to say to Siva too, she's going to be coming to the area of Toronto to view the eclipse. Now that won't be total, so that's partial, so that's really when we need to be careful with the, with the filters. So she wants to know how to capture that on a cell phone without damaging the lens, and I think you've covered that too. Um, if you have something more elaborate, is this what you're going to be using? Yeah, this is. Uh, so I'll be using a telescope. My wife Ashley will be using this lens. Okay. So, and the only reason we use something more substantial like this is just to get that sun in closer. So this is a 400 millimeter lens. Mm -hmm. That's a great focal length or magnification to use to just get a closer image. With that comes the challenge of keeping it ultra steady, as I mentioned. So we'll use it, be using a nice photography tripod okay, there. You didn't bring that in, but you would have a tripod. Yeah, you definitely need a tripod, especially when you're using these telephoto lenses. And again, the filtration is important. And what I will say, the, the ultimate photo to get is reserved for the people that are in the path of totality because there's a brief moment when the sun is completely covered by the moon. It's, it's called totality. And you just see this silver wreath of the corona of the, ap the atmosphere of the sun, that is the ultimate shot. And, that, and during that time only, you don't use a filter for that. And you also don't use a filter for your eyes, but it's a very brief time. It's just maximum, not even four minutes less in this than, particular yeah, less time. Than three minutes, less yeah. than three minutes. And so that is the only time when it's safe to look at the sun with the, un with the uncovered eye. Yeah. So you can take those shots of totality, fine. You take off all the filters, is that right? Yeah, you take off all the filters and then the, you, you need to change your camera settings as well because it goes from a very bright scene of the sun to a very dim scene. It looks like twilight outside. So you'll need to adjust your settings for a darker scene. Okay, so uh, do you... So just again, to, if somebody has a beautiful camera like that, do you adjust your shutter speed? Do you adjust your ISO? Do you, what are you yes. working on? It's a, you want to get that set in your mind too, but you don't want to be playing away in the middle of things, right? It's a frantic moment. Okay. It's a frantic moment. So unlike the partial phases where it's a long lasting event mm -hmm. where you can kind of experiment, this you'll have you know maybe 30 seconds to a minute to adjust mm -hmm. things. The, the basic thing is you, you want to let more light into the camera. So whether you're adjusting your aperture, your exposure settings, things that you know photographers are familiar with, right. they might be more quick on their feet to do that. But I also want to say, if you're fumbling too much in that three minute period, forget about the picture and just look up and enjoy it because it's, it's kind of a life changing experience. The picture should come secondary to experiencing that. That's a good advice, isn't it? You don't want to just not experience it for real. Take a break yeah. and, and, and experience Step away from that the camera. moment. Yeah. Okay, but I, I, maybe we did hit on something too. You want to have this all set in mind. Have your equipment all, you'd be familiar with everything. Practice if you're an amateur, get it all yes. set so you're not missing out on missing in the moment. Yeah. So, okay, again, give us the top, give us the top three things to do. Well, okay, so yeah, ex like I said, for the, the partial phases, ex right. experiment, get the shot you want there. Um, what a lot of people like to do is get pictures throughout each stage of the event right. and create a nice composite photo that tells the story of the entire eclipse. That's the be all end all, you know, eclipse photo. Um, second to that is, is to get that picture of totality. Maybe you don't even use it through your lens. You just take a picture of a, you know, a wide field scene of a crowd of people all watching it together. And then third would be, uh, like I said before, that I know everyone wants that souvenir shot to say, I, I got it, I got the picture, but you would really look back and regret it if you didn't take at least a couple of seconds to just look up and enjoy it and feel what it feels like for a total solar eclipse. So uh, from someone who has, has obviously experienced all of that, uh, what are you hoping to have happen uh, for you and to you on Monday? So I'm, I'm excited to experience it with, uh, with my wife, Ashley, uh, and to really feel that the temperature changes and the animals act different and to, to really soak in the experience uh, where, you know, as a photographer, usually I'm obsessed about the photo. This time I'm, I'm trying to tell myself, uh, you know, this, that comes second to the experience. And I'm hoping for clear skies because those clouds are really keeping us guessing right now. Yeah, will you be able to get anything? 
that's the thing. You might just be a small break yeah. in the cloud. You see one stage of the eclipse. You never know. But ideally, to see the full, you know, three minutes of totality would be the ultimate. Hence, you're traveling. Yeah. Hopefully, to, yeah. to, to get there in the shadow of the moon. Thank you so much for coming in. I think it's been most helpful. Safety first. I'm, I'm really stressing that these days because, you know, so many people are going to be watching this. Yeah. And uh, obviously, we need to keep that in mind when taking the shot, too. Thanks, Trevor. Really pleased to meet you. Thanks, Heather.